Ruby Gems. They make it easier than ever to add features into your Rails application, but that can also cause headaches down the road. How do you decide between using a gem or writing it from scratch? And if you do go with gems, how do you decide which gem to use when there are many available which seem to accomplish a similar task? Well, this episode is going to be a little bit different as I give you some tips on exploring gems and finding the one that is a good fit. One of the first places I turn to in doing research is the Ruby Toolbox. I love that projects are broken down into categories, which is a great way to solve a situation. So for example, if I need to add authentication to my app, there's a category for that. And it gives me a nice overview of different projects which are available for accomplishing this and a rough idea of their popularity. Now at this point, it's a good idea to narrow down your application's requirements. In this case of authentication, you need to ask yourself, do I want to authenticate through Twitter and Facebook or handle authentication through a password? And if so, do I want the ability to reset a password or do I care what the authentication looks like? All of these are great questions and can help decide which gem to use because they each handle authentication in their own unique way. Now, another important factor in deciding is seeing how active the project is. Uh, the Ruby Toolbox gives you some idea here, but I usually like to check out the GitHub project directly to have a more accurate depiction. So let me focus on Devise for a minute. It's one of the most popular Rails-related gems, and uh, here you can see the last commit was a couple days ago, which was very frequent, and if we look out the full commit list, uh, it is just a very active project. If there were only a few commits over the past year or so, then I'd be a little concerned because it might not work with the current Rails version or it might break on the next Rails major release. Another thing I like to check out is the issue tracker. If you compare the number of open issues to closed issues here, you can get an idea on how responsive they are. And seeing over 2,000 closed issues here, I'm really impressed with the contributors to Devise. It's a lot of work to manage a popular open source project, and they're doing a great job. Next, I like to search for the project on rubygems.org and compare when the different versions were released. Uh, the most recent release was uh, several months ago, which could just mean that it was a really solid and stable release, but that is something to be aware of, that it is a ways behind the uh, Git repository. Now, while I'm here, I also like to check out the runtime dependencies. It's important to understand that you're often not just adding one gem to your application. Even the dependencies can have dependencies. In the end, you might be adding in a half a dozen gems, and these are all moving parts that could break compatibility in an update. Uh, oftentimes, when I run into an issue with a gem where it doesn't seem to behave like I expect it to, it's with some kind of odd dependency issue. This is why the gemfile.log file in your Rails app is so critical. It locks all the versions down for gem dependencies, so even if there is a new version available, it'll stick with the older version until you run the bundle update command. So when you do run that command, just watch out for odd issues because there might be incompatibilities. Also, when you're adding a gem to your gem file, you might want to use this greater than tilde operator as demonstrated here, so that way, if there is a major update uh, and you run the bundle update command, it will only update this last digit, and that way uh, it likely won't break a backwards compatibility. Next, I want to talk about documentation, which is sadly lacking in many Ruby gems. But sometimes uh, something is well documented, it's just that I'm not looking in the right place. One thing to always check out is the project's wiki. Uh, there can be a gold mine of information here, and that's easy to miss. And also, not all pages might be linked within the wiki, so check out the pages section for a full list. You should also check out the rdocs, which you can often find at rubydoc.info and just search for the GitHub project there. So this provides a nice way to browse a documentation that's within the actual source code. You can often find all kinds of goodies in here, and even if you, there is an extensive documentation, you can find a good overview of the different classes and methods that the gem includes. Now, another great way to learn about a project is to dive into the source code itself. This is something I like to do for any gem I add to my application. Not only will it give you a better understanding of that gem, but you might learn some cool tricks too. While I sometimes just browse a source on GitHub, for some serious spelunking, I like to clone the Git repository so I can browse it locally. I like to have a special GitHub directory set up where I can just clone projects into for exploring. So let's explore Devise. Now one way to estimate the size of a project is to do a line count. I like to use the clock command, which if you're on a Mac with Homebrew, you can install with brew install clock. So I'll run this on the app and lib directories for Devise. So this contains about 3,000 lines of Ruby code, which I think is quite a lot. It's definitely one of the larger authentication libraries, and this is one of my main hesitations when considering Devise. 
but I also have to take into account that it packs in a lot of features. This is where it's important to understand what your requirements of your application are. If you want a more lightweight and simpler approach to authentication, consider writing it from scratch like I show in episode 250. That's only about 100 lines of code. Anyway, this shouldn't be your only deciding factor of using a gem, but it is certainly something to be aware of. Another thing I like to check while we're here is the number of lines in the test or spec directory. Uh, this just gives me a rough idea on how well the project is covered because I like a Ruby gem I use to be well tested. And uh, this has nearly 6,000 lines of code, which is definitely a lot for considering the project size. Next, let's briefly dive into the source code of this gem. A good place to start is under the lib directory, under the file that matches the same name as the gem. This is often the one that's first loaded in. This will often tell us what dependencies it uses and sort of give us an overview of uh, the structure of the gem. And uh, don't forget to go down to the bottom where it might require some more files. A good next stop from here is the uh, rail tie file if the gem has one, or in this case, it's just called rails. So let's check that out and right here. So this will give us an idea of what happens when it loads this gem into a Rails application. This is a full-on engine, hence the uh, app directory, because it's going to uh, load in other files there for models and controllers and so on. And also notice that it's loading in some middleware for Warden. And it looks like this includes some helper methods here and adds in some OmniAuth support, adding in middleware for that if it's configured. And then a few other things that aren't quite as important but getting to know what's happening here can really help debugging situations where things seem to go a little haywire. Now, if the gem is an engine like this one, be certain to check out the app directory because there are a lot of things that you'll need to probably know pretty well inside of here because you might need to override certain behavior and it just helps to understand what uh, the gem is actually providing in your Rails app. Now, I won't be diving into this here, but it's usually pretty easy to walk through because it's basically a Rails app within a gem. Well, that's all I have for you on this topic. I hope it gives you some ideas when you're needing to uh, add a feature into your Rails app and considering various gems on picking the right one or considering writing it from scratch if you don't want the extra dependencies. Thanks for watching.